Alright, so it is Monday, December 27th. I splashed some cold water on my face to help me wake up. Well, to help wake me up. I instinctively go to check my face in the mirror, only to be met with an empty reflection. Guess I should get used to that. Hope I don't look like a complete mess, even if it does help my alibi. Although, Mark was pretty nice to me even before I cleaned up. Since sight isn't going to help. Let's go with the next best thing. The glyph under my arms. Nothing too egregious. Possums are naturally always a little musky, so it's hard to tell how I come off to other species. Any marks into that? I mean, he's a posh guy, sure. Maybe he likes to get dirty on the side. This is New York. Who knows what the rip get up to here. I grab my shirt from the drying rack and expect it. Mark was nice enough to let me run it through the washer overnight. Probably need to borrow some heavier clothing if we're going to be outside all day. Could help but feel like a charity case. At some point I'll have to find a way to pay him back for all of this. Oh, he will never sat right, up, sat right by me. That's why I left home in the first place. But in the end, all I did was hurt more people. Coffee's on. Coming. Alright game time. Today is going to be great. I throw on my shirt and make my way to the common area. Mark's sitting on the couch reading the paper. Two steaming cups sit on the coffee table. He leans down to grab one and grins as he sees me. Feeling better? I made sure the brew were french rolls for you. There are plenty of sugar cubes in there to boot. I smile and take a seat. The intoxicating smell of freshly brewed coffee wake me up more than the cold water did. I took a nice big sip. Mm. It's really good. Really good coffee. I'm glad you approve. I ordered these from a small shop in the village. They ordered it from a small cafe in Paris. Crazy. Who I guess orders it from Colombia, huh? Talk about a roundabout way to get a cup of joe. At least it's sweet this time. He nods and sets the newspaper down the stretch. Complete with big dopey canine yawn. He has to change out of his robe and get a good look at his body now that I've calmed down. Can't believe how dense his fur is. It's soft but still kind of shaggy with tufts curling up and thick patches all over his chest and stomach. Not bad muscular for a man his age either. Though I'm only guessing he looks maybe 32, 33. Clothes must be custom tailored to fit him perfectly, or I would have noticed his cute little belly sooner. No, what call me? It was cut like marble. I've always been a sucker for a more average body type. I always joke that once I learned how to cook, I fattened him up into a perfect chunky lap doll. Luckily for him, I can't cook worth a damn. <laughs> when I'm done old goggling, I realize I've been staring for a while. Look up to see Mark staring back. He laughs awkwardly. I uh, see something strange. I know, I mean, uh, yes. Your body is very. Red. I'm not great at flirting to begin with, but that was definitely not my best work. Yes, yeah, so uh, very observant, Mr. Gray. Don't patronize me. <laughs> I want to kill myself again. Honestly, it's so red I give a ticket for a fox all the time. All I had to show him that may prove that I'm part of the canine club. Honestly, I never met a maine wolf up until now, and I see the similarities, but I met enough foxes to know the difference. Now, one difference between the fox abundance of sex pheromones, most critters smell something before we see it. You can actually tell when the fox is in the mood. Cannot have better control over the chemical side of the body language, but can't hide the physical sounds very well. Nose marks tail is wagging. Do you want to see? Uh, sure. Kinda curious, all things considered. He faces away from me and tugs his robe down, exposes his back. What I thought was a tuft of dark hair extends all the way down like a mohawk, trails down the spine to the base of his tail, fitting out right above where I imagine his ass is. Can I touch it? Go ahead, I shampooed it and everything. 
run my hand down the length of it. I always feel like a horse mane. There's substance to it, since it holds its shape. My fingers glide through it like normal hair. Get to the small of his back and stop. Well, I did it. I pull away and he lifts his robe back over his shoulders. I did want to see how far I went, but... Let's not get frisky with a complete stranger just yet, alright? But done that road enough times. Oof. Now you're part of an elite group. Oh? I touched Mark's mane and all I got was this lousy shirt. And all that. We laughed and finished our coffee. He heads to the bedroom of the chain before we head out. I grab the newspaper, curious as to see what's happening in the future. I flip it over the front page to skim through the headlines of the day. Tensions rise as civil rights protesters continue to clash with NYPD. PKI resistance in Indonesia squash. U.S. backs new order. Number of heroin addicts soar as drug epidemic spreads to suburbs. Oh, that was a bummer. No race is still an issue makes my heart sink. I feel like things were slowly improving back in my time. Dark bird folks own almost every club restaurant on our block. Simon and uh, Ethan were making good money too. But it was nothing compared to how my family lived. The mayor and governor were still pale furs at the end of the day. I have to remember that I'm in the bubble when it comes to this stuff. I've had ghost face and turncoat hissed at me enough time to know it takes more than good attentions to convince anyone I'm truly with the cause. Check off the negative thoughts and take our dirty cups over to the sink. The least I can do while I'm here for free is to clean up after myself. Mark's kitchen was small but tidy. Pots and pans hanging on the wall looked like they'd never been used. Thin layer of dust outlining each one confirmed my suspicions. Well, if I had this kind of money again, I like I eat my own shitty cooking eater. Almost ready. You mind if I put out a coat for you? Okay, um, nothing too flashy, please. Out of curiosity, I checked the fridge. Electric. Fancy. Pop it open and... Three bottles of beer in the takeout box. Yep, that's what I expected. Mark returns to his a dry cleaning bag over the couch. He's wearing a sharp overcoat. I think you'll approve. I zip open the bag, not sure what to expect. We'll see. This is an Ulster coat. Fine tweeted in black. Wouldn't be out of place in my own time. Mark really does have an eye for fashion. Wow. This is, um, very nice. Right? They all look dashing with your fur color. I have to disagree. I usually avoid dark color because I hate emphasizing how wet my fur face, or my face fur is. I look like some washed out phantom when I wear black. This would be a great look on a brightly colored fur like Mark's. Although, which is probably why he bought it. Let me turn it on before I walk out looking like a kid wearing his dad's coat. Hmm. I'm not that tall. You're a giant, sir. I slip it into it and walk over to the mirror in the foyer. Somehow it fits me perfectly. Did he actually get the wrong size and forget to return it? My whistles at me and I blush a little. Wow, looking that for Mr. Gray. Told you it'd be a good fit. Thanks. He walks behind me and leans in, his arms hanging around my chest and around my neck. He's a little heavy. I'm not really minded, but it's hard to breathe with him on top of me. Yep, it is just how I remember it. Uncanny, really. He muttered something under his breath, and I can't quite make out. Hey, Gray. I'm breathing a little louder than intended. I squeak out a reply. Yeah? You don't have to sleep on the couch anymore. Not if you don't want to. I bet it's good enough for the both of us. I don't know how to respond. That did sound lovely, but right now I feel overwhelmed by the way that his body pressured me. I choke out another reply. Are you sure? Where I start feeling lightheaded, he eases off of me, fixes my collar, smiling innocently. Hmm. Hospitality is the number one priority at El Casa. Casa de Mark. He locks the door and waves me over. Come along, then. Big day ahead of us. 
I still don't really follow him out, trying to think about whatever that was. Yeah, whatever that was. Pretty weird. Please don't look for me. I won't be found. I love you all. Great. So, what do you make of this? It's gotta be the most half ass suicide I know I ever laid eyes on. Right? It doesn't sound like him at all. And the handwriting is sloppy too. Now, these things usually require multiple attempts. Trash can's empty. I guess he rushed it. I don't think he's actually suicidal, but... But... What if he's serious? What if he is? He's grown. It's his choice. We both know he probably just ran away again. Chicken-hearted guy like him couldn't go with often himself. Then we should go out and find him before he gets too far. No? No. Okay. What is wrong with you? He's our... Listen. Simon, Chris Simone, I know you like having him around, but we're not kids anymore. The same play time. Let's be honest with ourselves. He's a mooch. He's taking advantage of your kindness, as well as Jean's greed. Maybe he ran on back to his daddy crying and fussing. Got tired of pretending to be a city boy and running around with. Maybe he just needed some distance from you. It wasn't easy for him to focus on work with you coming around all the time. You'd say that, but are we in the same boat? Oh, I remember. I couldn't stop crying after he had, he and I got together. Ray broke your heart, Simone. That's in the past. I moved on. Maybe this past is where he should stay. This would be good for both of us. He left a note because he wants to be found. His heart isn't in it. I know it. At least I know I'd want someone to try and find me. <sighs> you never give up, do you? Well, the storm may land up anytime soon. We should get going out before he does anything stupid. Well, more stupid than this. Right, let's go. Hmm. We hop in the elevator and start the minute and a half long trip down. So what are you showing me first? Well, you're new here, so I wanted to show you the staples of the city, Empire State, Statue of Liberty, all that jazz. The door is open and we head outside. Our manager is to wave down a taxi rider quickly and we pile in. First up, Times Square. After that, the Empire State is a short walk over. So, well, a two of her. What's Times Square like? I imagine it. Rows of bright flash and lean on lights as far as the eye can see. Billboards the size of buildings. See through on stage shows at the Broadway Theater. His eyes sparkle with admiration. I nod his ear every word, probably able to contain myself waiting to arrive at these promised lands. I'm no stranger to an urban landscape, but New Orleans is nothing like this. What I've seen, the city seems to ooze culture and opulence out of every alley. The singing voice wasn't bad either. Smoky tenor that resonated pleasantly throughout our tiny carriage. His deep voice was, and no doubt, partly due to the cigarettes I recall him smoking in that strange place back when we first met. Occurs to me that he's refrained from lighting up since I've joined him, as he's quitting for the New Year's resolution. I remember how on edge Ethan was when he tried to quit and shudder. His temper is short enough as it is. I practically bit our heads off anytime we asked how it was going. When Ed was hurt, someone wanted to hurt someone. He went for the throat every time. Last bite. If Simone wasn't there too. So the taxi screeches to a halt and the gyro flips the ticker off. Here's you guys are. Now we have $1.75, pal. Mark throws more than required the mouth through the collection window as we found to the world. We're here, Times Square. What adventures away? Live Girls Peekaboo Erotica. 42nd Street Sneakers. Nimble Vixen K9 Feline Avian Foxes. I see Transsexual and something else. And then XX videos. Okay, so these are like. Okay. What the hell is this? Future litter with trash and all those no people are out here. 
<clears throat> a bitter wind whips up through the air on the narrow street and I tuck my head in, pulling the collar of my new coat over my sensitive ears. Helen just recovered from my previous bout with frostbite. My fleshy bits were still pretty raw. Marvin Lewis says to pull me closer, locking arms with me, stuffing his hand into my pocket to cover by. Do you mind if I see a little heat? I shake my hand, his paw is pretty warm, one well, hand. And I think I was actually the one benefiting from it. Expecting more people. Well, it is Monday. Maybe walk a little further up. We strolled on the icy sidewalk, look to my left and see some of the neon signs Mark was raving about earlier. Girls, girls, girls. XXX. Peep show. Pretty feline wearing only an overcoat and heels back as an old badger into one of the shops. Looks around suspiciously before sliding off a ring and darting inside. Oh. Not my business. A few bums lay outside. Some through in various states of undress, drinking out of bottle covered by brown paper bags. One is pantsless and fully displayed, basically jerking himself off in broad daylight. Luck I that he smiles at me with all four of his teeth remaining. Hey toots, looking for something to shove in that old big snout of yours? Uh, no. no. <laughs> he laughs and helicopter his filthy dick at me. I got me all day, sucker. Right here, pal. Mark pulled me aside and flips the bigger dog before turning back to me with an exasperated look on his face. <laughs> Are you sure this is the time square we were talking about, Mark? And well, let's talk down this way. Less scenic, but much less safer. Much more safer. <laughs> it threw me off a little bit. Your bowed face. I started dropping down the avenue. Mark pulled me along so hard I almost eat dirt tumbling over a snowbank. Hey, uh, slow down a bit. <laughs> yes, of course. And drop us off on 7th, not 8th. Silly me, we're almost there. We ran the corner so fast, I was knocking to a trash can. Okay, here we are. Here, district. The greatest fun anybody can have while simply sitting down. I think that's what it says. I'm excited. Recalling the private show Mark just gave me, the idea of seeing big time stars on Broadway instead of randoms in a dingy club made me giddy. Unless it was Simone, of course. She always knocked it out of the park. We walk past the concert hall and I run over to the listings. Who's playing? Gershwin? I'm afraid he's been dead for quite some time. Ouch. Okay. Of all the shocks in my system, that one hurt the most. I see a list one, Barbara Streisand. No clue who that is, so I move on towards the playbills. Don't move over from Barbara. Don't do that. Alright, well, who's big right now? Is uh, Tulu Big Head still performing? Okay, now nah, I know you weren't lying yesterday. Sheesh. Told you. Looks like all that's playing is Matinee of Sweet Charity. You know, Fosse. There's a little Jad Jester with his hands. No, but I hope he sees a doctor about that dick. He chuckled that we round the corner into the main square. There's more people around now and none of them the hobo flasher variety. And here it is. Sorts of all the postcards. I look up expecting to see the sea of dazzling lights Mark described. Billboards the size of my house with dancing neon. I gave him one thing, the lights are on. But it's eleven in the morning. That's better than night. You don't say. Too bad, I could easily imagine how great this would look in the dark, but after seeing how sketchy the regulars are, I wouldn't want to stick around and see them. Great, right, um, I hear music in my ears perk up. Someone with a guitar is playing for tips down the block. I veer off in that direction. Mark whines, upset that things aren't going to plan. Come on, something at least. I guess. You can decide that we keep walking. Charles is a husky wearing a cowboy hat playing folk songs for a growing crowd of people. Music wasn't anything special, but his voice was nice and I found myself tapping my feet. Hmm, this isn't so bad. At least we don't have to wait in line. See? I told you. Suddenly a cowboy also in a cowboy hat rushes up behind him, knocks the husky to the ground. The car smashes on the ground and strings snapping with a discordant twang. Son of a bitch, you stole my fucking act. <laughs> that doesn't bother me of something. Never mind. 
the crowd gas. Damn it, who the hell do you think you are? They started wrestling on the ground, knocking the tip jar over. Some of the crowd flew in terror while others scrambled to pick up the loose change. Fists started to fly and eventually some cops run out of a nearby coffee shop. Break out the fire for the end of a few hits of their own. Alright, you two, you get it out of your systems? Congratulations, you just bought yourself two tickets to the coziest selling Rikers. They roughly handcuffed them behind the back and hurried them down the street. Color cop knocks the couch to the floor, laughing as he struggles to get up without the use of his arms. It's a bloody mess. Lip busting in both eyes well shut. Hard as hell whether it's from the spot board or the arrest. House pass, I pass. Pass by us and shoot me a dirty look. Must be given one back. Trey Cop pushes the hussy onto his partner and ties me up. You got something to say, half and half? Progress found Mark steps between us and nudges me in the opposite direction. We don't want any trouble. He turns around and whispered to me and not break eye contact with the officer. Let's get out of here. I nod, still scowling at the pigeon who's resting a hand on his nice stick. The other, a falcon, keeps his eyes trained on us as well. Have a nice day, sir. Probable venom on that last word. Bird grunts and walks away from us. I hear the coyote yelp behind me, followed by the slam of the car door as we escape unscathed. He has so much of looks sideways at Mark. Maybe I just given him a piece of my mind. I don't think I'd win that fight. Probably wouldn't do me any good if I got locked up on my second day anyway. I'm not surprised at the gresh from the police at all. Whatever small amount of privilege possums have, more pale face is meaningless against unbashed, racist with power. Mark's fists are shaking down as I follow him through the crowd. We walk in silence for a while. The mood has shifted so much in just a few minutes that the day has only just begun. I can tell Mark is in a bad mood by how fast he's walking. Not even chuckling if I'm still behind him. I feel a little bad, even though it was ultimately out of our control. Mark mother something under his breath. Just had to go see the dog at the pony show, huh? I jog a bit to catch up with him and try to get his attention. I had to probably step in front of him, but eventually he stopped and sighed to himself. Mark stopped. He starts walking the stairs at the ground, unable to look at me. I wasn't trying to cause problems. That cop was such a... No, 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 it's not that. You're right to be upset. They were assholes. Why are you... It's nothing. Look, we just came on an off day, that's all. It's supposed to be like this. Who wasn't? Okay, sure. You give us are to blame, though. Shit happens sometimes. He finally looks at me with a concerned expression. I just... Need a smoke. Huh? Choking that pantomime. Pantomime. Puffing an imaginary cigarette. I know you smoke, Mark. I can smell it on your clothes. The apartment. Give you your breath if I'm lucky. Well, I didn't want to oppose. Mark is fine. Everyone knows I I know smoke cigarettes. I'm used to it. He said I want to lose one out of his coat's breast pocket. I feel bad subjecting you to secondhand smoke is all. Lung cancer, you know. Mm, but my doctor smokes. So does mine. After a flash from his lab, he takes a deep drag and sighs. Smoke billowing out of his nostrils like twin dragons. Anyway, that's not what I was going to say. What then? I actually really wanted to impress you. You already have. Besides, you can't control the entire city. There are weirdos everywhere. He's not able to seem convinced. Put his hand on the shoulder and give it a gentle squeeze. So I have two sights to see. The day is young. Come on, don't give up. His eyes brighten and he smiles back weakly. Puts out a cigarette and cranes his head, looking at the street signs. Well, in that case, we're already on 33rd. We just have to walk down the 5th Avenue and we'll be at the Empire State Building. He points up at the giant building that's been looming over us the whole day. It was all from Mark's apartment miles away from here. Like the other skyscrapers I've seen, doesn't instill the same primal sense of fear in me. Despite being the tallest, something about it being that big just makes sense cosmically. Like Big Ben or the Act Tower. Okay. Been part of the building. All right. Um, I think I'm going to save. Let's see, where is he? Yeah, we'll save. Wipe the main menu, just so I can uh, 
edit this, push that for y'all. Then we're gonna next part um for y'all of course. Um but yeah this is Burl's I believe this is part four. Um if you enjoyed this video of course like comment subscribe share all that good stuff. Um I'll be working on the next part of course you know very soon. Um if you want to play this game for yourself you know everything will be linked below and uh I'll go have a good day and I will see y'all in the next video.